Sure. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Hold What's going on? Are you guys going to be ready? Oh. Go ahead, Gary. Okay. Uh, ben, are you the, uh, do you have the mentality perhaps to look at the, the totality here? You're, you're, you're two shots off the lead. You may, that may be pretty good by the end of the day. And if somebody giving you that before you started, can you kind of put what happened on 18 behind you? And think yeah. in those terms. Yeah, I mean, it's playing tough out there. To be bogey-free through 17 holes, I thought was pretty freaking good. Um, you know, it was a grind, and unfortunately, I didn't finish the way I wanted to, but it, it's the 18th hole is probably the toughest hole all day, so I'm not going to be the first guy to make a double there. Um, you're going to see a few, and um, I'm just happy to be in my position that, I am, that I'm in to uh, make a charge this weekend and hopefully finish on top. And on 17, did, did you get a gust or did you push it? Which, which was that? Yeah, it was a tweener. Um, 17's playing hard off the left, and um, guys that are going to land it on, to on that top shelf are going to have a tough time keeping it on, on the green. It's going to probably bounce over. So going in that hole, I was really just trying to land it fractionally on the top shelf, if not just into the shelf and have an uphill putt. Um, if you can hit it on that green through, you know, four days in a row, you're probably going to do pretty good against the field. And I did push it, and uh, it was a sigh of relief to see it kind of finish on land. And um, my goal the rest of the week is just to hit the middle of the green there. What did you learn from Bermuda? Uh, just the, I mean, it was just reassurance more than anything that I kind of belong. Um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling very comfortable, and uh, it was just good to be in the mix. You know, I, I didn't finish it off and uh, short-sighted myself a few too many times there on the back nine and um, left myself a lot of shots that were downwind with not a lot of green to work with. So for me, this weekend, building out Bermuda, I just need to be a little bit better with my misses because um, I am going to miss shots and just got to make sure I leave myself in a position where I can get up and down and save the par and make birdies when I can. Did you feel comfortable in that spot, though? It wasn't, it wasn't about being uncomfortable, right? Yeah, I was swinging it really good. So I think I was almost a little too confident with my swing on some of the lines I took. Um, you know, looking back on it, I, I, there's still nights, you know, where I go to bed and I think about what if, um, you know, what if I'd done this on that tee shot? So it still is in the back of my head and it still bugs me. And uh, I know when I get my first win, hopefully this week, it'll uh, kind of be in the past and I'll be looking forward to the future a little bit more. It's been, it's been yeah, absolutely. Thank you, you. You've had a unique path here, obviously. Um, what, what did you kind of learn from that experience away? You learn from the experience away. Like the last few years? Yeah. Yeah. Taking um, a break. Yeah, taking a break. It's just provided me with an awesome perspective. Um, a lot of guys out here, you know, not going to say any names, but a lot of people have big egos. And they, you know, for me, it's like I'm just very gracious to be playing and um, very lucky to play on awesome conditions, have player dining. I mean, there's so much to be thankful for at all these PGA Tour events. They do so much for us. And, um, for me, uh, when I'm on the golf course, it's just about making birdies, and I, I'm not too worried about anything else. Just trying to compete against the best in the world and um, see where my name stacks up. What do you think of the interest rates right now? It's the interest rates? The interest rates, they're, yeah. they're too high um, if you're trying to buy a house. Yeah. Um, you know, a $500,000 house, you know, two years ago was a little bit more affordable. It's probably double the cost now on a monthly payment. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I picked a good time to get out of the mortgage industry and I'm, I don't know how, but it, you know, people think I'm a wizard for timing it so perfectly. All right. Grant, granted that it's your rookie year, so you yeah. haven't really had time to play your way into that tier of the, that top 50 tier, so to speak. What's been your take on, on the changes of the last couple of weeks and, and a guy like you who probably isn't part of those conversations? What's it been like watching that happen? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of the changes are, are good. I think they're going to benefit the entire entirety of the tour. I just think it might be a little more difficult for a rookie to come up and get to the top 50 or even have a high enough world ranking to get into majors quicker. Um, so it's going to be a little tougher journey, I think, based off the changes. But as for a PGA Tour player, I don't think any PGA Tour player can really be too against this because everyone's going to, you know, everyone, regardless of what tournaments you're playing in, whether you're in the highest ones or if the elevated ones or if you're in the regular season, you're either going to have a weaker field and play for more money and have a chance to win, or you're going to be in the elevated events and have guaranteed money and play against the best. So at the end of the day, everyone should be happy. Um, you know, you're going to have more big-time players win less. Elevated events are going to be super competitive. You're going to have a guy like... I mean, maybe not John Rahm, but someone of his caliber, maybe not win a given season and have a really great year. And you're going to have a guy who's outside of those elevated events, um, who knows a name or anything, but someone like that who's going to win. So it's going to benefit everyone uh, at the end of the day, I think. And, um, but it's definitely a little tougher if you're a kid coming out of college. You've got to put the pedal down and um, not be afraid to beat some pretty good players to get to the top. But that's how, how it should be. That's meritocracy uh, at its finest. And so I think everything's going to end up being all right.
Doing, doing a story you? on the fourth hole, uh, you birdied it today, but it's been all over the place these first couple of days. Uh, why do you think that it's been so hard for some, but the fourth hole, in, yeah, the, the fourth hole in specific, um, yeah, it's a tough tee shot. Um, you got to hit that fairway to have a chance to get it close on that green. I missed the missed the fairway the first round and hit a really good shot to get it by the green and two. And then today I had an awesome tee shot with a driver. It's into the wind today and um, left myself a 25 footer. I'd call it more of a bonus to make that putt. Um, but yeah, that's a that's not the only hole out here that's going to be playing tough though. Uh, you got to hit the fairways if you're trying to have chances for the most part. And um, judging the wind today is going to be very difficult for the guys this afternoon. Right after the COVID break, you tried to Monday qualify for the KFT event at Valley, didn't make it. And what do you remember about that and how far, long ago or not as long ago does that seem? It seems like forever ago. I mean, technically, it's two jobs ago for me. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, uh, yeah, it's tough. You know, you know, I was in a position where I was trying to Monday qualify um, really for two or three years. And um, I had my success at times but it's um, financially very difficult to keep doing and it's very hard mentally to kind of keep keep at it and grind and try to make it when there's no guarantees um, for money or anything like that if, once you get through a Monday so uh, you know I'm just blessed to have a full schedule um, you know playing the Corn Ferry last year was awesome having a full year and not having to you know grind for Monday qualifiers or anything like that um, this year I actually did do a Monday qualifier I did the waste management uh, Monday because I wasn't in the field um, which is a bummer, but that's the way the system was. And, um, you know, it's just uh, awesome to be playing, um, have a schedule and playing against the best players. Do you remember anything about that particular Monday qualifier at Palencia? You missed by a, a few. I uh, did I? Yeah, yeah I don't really remember much. Um, but if I didn't make it, obviously I was going home to practice and try to get ready for the next. So, yeah, that part of my life was uh, it was difficult. You know, you have negative, uh, you know, your, your credit card um, you have a lot of credit card debt, and you're trying to figure out how to make things meet or ends meet. And you know, fortunately, my parents were so supportive. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm just blessed to have money in my bank account and be playing against the best in the world. <laughs> how, how's sure. how's veganism played a role in your? Yeah, um, I've been plant based for almost a year now, um, trying to eat healthier. I have a lot of energy. I get done with 18th hole, and I feel like I can go back out and try to make more birdies right away a lot of guys get tired and so I credit some of that whether it's less alcohol or veganism to you know my overall health just feeling better and feeling energized and uh, you know I think it helps with a lot of benefits for me I mean it might not be for everyone but um, I've really enjoyed it and I've been playing good golf doing it so <laughs> I don't see any reason why I would ever stop could, could, can I just ask one other thing when you stepped away from golf did you know you were going to come back or were you just thinking that's no, it. I thought I was done. If it weren't for Doug Sig and Lord Abbott, the logo here, um, he offered to pay all my expenses for two years um, to play professional golf. And as a golfer, when you're starting up, that is a humongous like sigh of relief and huge for your confidence and everything because you don't have to think about anything but winning. Before, I'm thinking about, all right, how am I going to you know, pay my rent? How am I going to pay my food? Like, I'm not going to get guac at Chipotle. That's what Victor Hovland used to say. I mean, it's stuff like that that's real. Yes. Um, and he was so supportive of me. I, I was so blessed to have even met him. Uh, him and his daughter, um, he, he moved to Sea Island, got a house down there because he wanted his daughter to practice more golf. And I randomly played nine holes with him. He started working out with my trainer, Randy Myers. Randy told him I quit golf. And he was like, he doesn't need to be quitting golf because I played with him. I saw how good he was. And he saw something in me that, you know, some other people may have saw, but he was able to put the check forward to me to allow me to play professional golf. And so uh, him and a combination of Jesse Ahern, who's staying over there, or standing over there, he paid for my Q school um, last year. So I'm just blessed. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ben.